the Luanda leaks, as they have been called, revealed that Isabel dos Santos made a fortune, but at the expense of the Angolian people, two decades of unethical deals that made Isabel Africa's wealthiest woman, but left Angola as one of the poorest countries in the world. We now have with us Silla Alassi, one of the journalists who was involved in the investigation, joining us live on the broadcast. Silla, thanks very much for speaking with us. Let me begin by asking you to explain to us how for such a long time Isabel was able to exploit family links, run shell companies and siphon off such huge amounts of money. So the Luanda Leaks investigation that we did um, in collaboration with more than 100 reporters um, all over the world um, found that um, um, Isabel dos Santos, who's the daughter of uh, Angola's uh, former president, um, was able to amass a fortune and move it to um, shell companies and other companies uh, around the world thanks to um, a swathe of intermediaries, so um, accountants, um, legal advisors, uh, consultants, etc., who worked for her and who profited handsomely by helping her um, uh, move the funds and uh, set up these uh, offshore uh, companies for her. Right, and there were, as we understand, more than 7 lakh emails that were under scrutiny. A lot of resources, of course, that went into centralizing all that information that could be used as concrete evidence. Tell us more about what went into that investigation. So more than 100 journalists, as I said, spent uh, about eight months going through all these documents that included emails, uh, confidential contracts, um, uh, company charts, and, and more. Um, and uh, emails and also documents that were both in English and Portuguese and also other languages. Um, ICIJ has been working on this kind of investigations for some time. So this is not actually uh, a big investigation for us in terms of the quantity of documents because the Panama Papers had more than 10 million documents and this has um, 700,000. But we have a system already um, vetted where we use the technology to help us uh, go through all these documents. And what's more, and I think that's the strength of ICIJ, is the group of veteran reporters who meticulously go through all these documents and not just the documents. We also verify them with um, outside sources public uh, open data and interviews and experts um, and so this is how we did it right and tell us more about how the investigators reached this point when was it realized that uh, there was something massively wrong and how Isabel was uh, managing to amass all that fortune at the cost of the Angolian people's wealth so it took a little bit to get accustomed to the um, to the documents that we had to understand what 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 kind of story uh, they were telling, and I think maybe a few months, a few weeks in, we found uh, emails uh, confirming how um, the Santos legal advisors were uh, drafting decrees uh, that would uh, later um, award their public contracts, and so and also we found this company charts that basically described how she was able to build an empire, not just um, um, in the African continent, but in Europe and other um, uh, continents. And so little by little, we basically, it's a little bit like putting together a puzzle. We used these documents and, as I said, other interviews, and we understood that the, the picture was bigger than what we had initially thought. It was not just a story about one person or one country. It's a story about a system and a system that is made, as I said, of intermediaries and Western firms and banks, etc., that helped her and her husband build this global empire. Right, and before we uh, let you go, Silla, uh, a quick check on uh, the reaction that has come in so far from Isabel. Uh, she has accused the investigators of a witch hunt. She has called the investigation politically motivated. How do you react to that?
she said that uh, there is no wrongdoing in what she and her husband have done and that it's uh, the current government, uh, the inquiry that the current government has launched uh, is uh, uh, politically motivated and they want to erase the legacy of her father. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we know that the Angolan government is collaborating with authorities in other countries to find the truth and to see whether what she says is actually true. True or or there is more. One thing that the um, attorney general, the Angolan attorney general, told us is that this is a difficult case for them, precisely because a lot of assets are in this. Uh, uh, tax haven and shell companies. And uh, as we know, secrecy jurisdictions um, make it very difficult for investigators to find who's behind these companies and what the business dealings actually are. So I think it will take some time to understand, um, to get to the bottom of this. Um, but there are already inquiries going on in several countries. All right, we're going to leave it there for the moment. Thanks very much, uh, Stella, for joining us on the broadcast with those details on that investigation. Moving on for now. <laughs>